right. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the New Year Six podcast. Uh, today, I'll be continuing my week one uh, preview prediction videos. This time around, we're going to go with Penn State at West Virginia, the site of big noon kickoff this Saturday. Uh, Morgantown's going to be rocking, a huge matchup for them, a good road test early in the season for Penn State. So let's. Uh, Let's get the review going. So just going to go team by team, give me some keys to the game, then do a final prediction at the end. So make it uh, make it easy on everyone there. So I'm going to start with the road team, Penn State. Uh, what are their keys to the game? So with that, uh, I'm looking at their roster. And you know, usually in week one, I like to see how these transfers pan out. The big one I'm looking at is Julian Fleming. So this guy comes out from uh, Ohio State. And you're know, really looking to make a, a career adjustment or a career change by going over to, uh, you know, Penn State, potentially being one of the lead guys there. How does that work out for him in week one? Does he emerge as a top receiving threat for Penn State? Or does he continue to be, you know, kind of lackluster? You know, he, he never emerged as the guy at Ohio State. Maybe no fault of his own. Ohio State obviously is one of the – deepest wide receiver rooms in the country and uh you know he just didn't crack through can he do so at penn state um this is going to be the, the game to do it uh you know he'll have plenty of opportunities when uh you know when you can well, when all things are considered west virginia historically does not have a great passing defense uh it's below average as of last year so you get a new receiver that should match up well against those dbs and uh, you know, make that type of impact that Penn State's looking for. Uh, in terms of what Penn State has done well, uh, continue to defend the run. Penn State last year, the best run defense in the country, and they're going up a they're going up against a rushing attack that is no slouch from West Virginia. This is a great challenge for both teams involved. You have the number one rushing defense from last year on Penn State. You have the number three rushing offense on West Virginia. And, you know, one of those lines is going to come out ahead. One of those, uh, you know, one of those sides is going to come out victorious. Is it going to be the D line for Penn state or is it going to be the running backs for West Virginia? We're going to find out on Saturday, but if Penn state's going to win, it's going to have to be on the back of that, uh, those front four. So I'm going to say Penn state, if you continue to defend the run and lock down the West Virginia's rushing attack, uh, you're going to walk away with this one with victory. Uh, where Penn State needs to get better at is, uh, you know, bending but not breaking in the red zone. So last year, Penn State had one of the worst red zone defenses. Uh, they ended up as 119th overall, which means that if you got it inside Penn State's 20, you were walking away with points, whether it be three or seven. Uh, Penn State's got to hold strong, create turnovers. Uh, you know, get a sack and push him out of uh, you know field goal range. Anything that you know makes it tougher for West Virginia to score. Uh, West Virginia's got some weapons on offense. You know, they, they make make no mistake of it. They got a below average uh, you know passing attack, but uh, the run you know the run attack is really their bread and butter. Uh, if they get close, I would expect West Virginia to be able to score in some capacity. West Virginia's red zone offense was average last year and the end of the year 68th overall but uh you know if penn state steps up to the plate and you know answers the call in a decent test in week one and you know that red zone defense gets better it takes points off the board for west virginia it gives penn state more opportunities to win and to increase a potential lead uh, against again a, a decently tough west virginia team on the road early so I'm going to pass it over to West Virginia. What are their keys to the game? What is it going to take for them to uh, win it all? So in the portal, uh, West Virginia's made a couple of interesting additions, specifically on the uh, defensive side. You know, uh, you know, I just talked about that the defensive uh, unit defending the pass was not great last year. You bring in Aiden Garns. He comes in from Duquesne. Uh, Garnett Hollins comes in from uh, Northwestern. So you have two brand new cornerbacks, and I'm sure they're going to want to make a make make a name for themselves. I'm sure they're going to want to step up to the plate and be the lockdown corners that West Virginia you know believes they can be. 
it's a matter of uh, will they. So, uh, you know, time will tell. Penn State as a passing attack was below average last year, ended up uh, as the 77th best team in the country through the air. So if you get some you know, guys that uh, you know, can lock it down, uh, it, it really is going to add to that passing defense, which was not great for West Virginia last year. So it's going to be a, a decent challenge for them in game one. And we're going to see what these cornerbacks can do in their new look defense. Does it propel West Virginia forward in a game that they will be uh, an underdog? Other than that, you know, you got to protect Eric Green. The O line for West Virginia was third best in the country when it came to sacks allowed last year. That needs to show up again this year. Uh, again, you're going up against a rush defense that is heavy hitting for uh, Penn State, and you know, again, one of those is gonna, you know, one of those is gonna fall short. Is it gonna be Penn State's rush? Is it gonna be West Virginia's protection? Time will tell. But if the O line shows up and Garrett Green has Garrett Green has times to make decisions, make reads, and make the correct call, West Virginia could steal this one at home. Uh, but speaking on that topic, West Virginia needs to open up the pass game. Uh, West Virginia last year was the 89th best passing offense in the country. And it was their worst statistical spot, uh, you know, that I can measure, at least of the however many categories that I take a look at. I take a look at about 12 or so. And uh, West Virginia struggled the most at, you know, throwing the ball, through, you, know, you know, moving the ball through the air. If they can be better at that this year, if they can get to average, West Virginia is going to be a threat to win this game. They're going to be a threat to win the Big 12. But if working at last year's team, they and they, and they get a similar type of performance this year out of their quarterback, they're, they're going to be around the 500 mark, maybe a little bit better, but it's not going to be anything special for West Virginia. So that passing attack has to get better year over year. You think with another year of experience under their belt for Garrett Green, that that is the natural progression. Uh, so be on the lookout for a more high volume passing attack this year, because if it is not increased, if it falls back, you know, Penn State's going to roll away with this one. But if West Virginia comes out there and they throw 250, 300 yards against a top 10 pass defense that Penn State had last year, West Virginia can steal this one at home. It's always going to be a possibility. You know, Morgantown is not an easy play to play, easy place to play. And, uh, you know, you, you got to think in week one, there's too many unknowns on both of these teams. So if the passing offense can step up, uh, you know, Penn State could be in trouble. So with that, cover both teams, kind of see what they're at and where they're going. Uh, I will head into my final score prediction. So without further ado, uh, I'm taking Penn State on the road to win this one. Uh, again, these are computer scores. Uh, you know, by my format, so it says 32-21. You want to do 31-21, make it a nice round football score. I'm all right with that. Um, but yeah, Penn State by about 10 or 11. I think the spread right now is about eight. So Penn State should cover on the road. Um, if this was in Penn State, if this was uh, at Penn State, I think it'd be bigger. Um, you'd probably do around 17-35, uh, something along those lines. But, yeah, Penn, Penn State's going to roll in this one. They'll be fine. Uh, going to come out of a tough environment with one of the better wins in week one uh, and a legitimate cha- legitimate case to be a top-five team if it gets bigger than this. But, um, yeah, no, I, I think Penn State's going to be in a good spot this week and ramp it up for the rest of the season. So that concludes this review. Who do you think is going to win? What are your keys to this game? Comment down below, like, and subscribe. Uh, So thanks for tuning in. Tune in next time as I go through Miami at Florida. That's going to be the next one here. Uh, Obviously, a bit of a bias on that one, but we're looking forward to seeing the season kick off. So thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, tune in next time.